Oh man, what is coolin' with you? Welcome in, my name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing. What's happening with you guys, man? I'm just listening to some tunes. I got little homies playing. We're rocking out. But I noticed we got Bengal Designs coming out with a new mock draft, and I was curious. So I wanted to take a look and see what he's got rocking and rolling. Speaking of Bengal, it's, you know, when you talk about Bengal, you got to talk about the GOAT himself, Steve Irwin. What good is a fast car, a flash house, and a gold plate of Dunny to me? Absolutely no good at all. I've been put on this planet to protect wildlife and wilderness areas, which in essence is going to help humanity. I want to have the purest oceans. I want to be able to drink water straight out of that creek. I want to stop the ozone layer. I want to save the world. And you know money? Money's great. I can't get enough money. And you know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to buy wilderness areas with it. Every single cent I get goes straight into conservation. But Steve Irwin is the goat of all animal life. He's the Tom Brady of animal life. Anyway, let's go and get into it here and rock it out. I watched Animal Planet all the time as a kid. One of my favorite shows. My sister actually got me into the Animal Planet. I'm telling you, rustling crocodiles, swimming with elephants, getting bit by alligators. So I'm like, he got bit by a snake, Hunter. It was like, zoom in. <laughs> the dude wasn't phased by anything. But let's get on to this mock draft here. Oh, I want to go watch the Animal Planet now. I'm, I want to be watching that. Uh, let's see what we got though. Oh, Bengal's not looking happy. Let's get to a better uh, picture. There we go. That's at least a little bit better. He was looking serious there. But speaking of serious, we're here with the number one pick. And he has the Houston Texans going Bryce Young. You know my affinity and my love for Bryce Young. He's the man. He's the myth. He's the legend. The dude is going to put the team on his back. It doesn't matter if he's small, if he breaks a leg. Bryce Young is an amazing prospect. I think he's been one of the best prospects I have seen. Joe Burrow level. Don't overthink it because of the size. Everybody always has something. There's always some sort of knock on every single prospect. Bryce Young is a beast. Number two, Will Anderson to the Raiders here. And this is where you're just saying to yourself, do we go quarterback? Do we go after just kind of best player available? Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, that whole conversation comes into question. It is really tough. I'm watching the Raiders right now. I'm going through the film and it's been really, they just keep blowing games. I'm like, they're up in the lead and they just like, oh, they fall apart in the fourth quarter, which to me, I think it's more of a coaching sort of issue that they need to get together in the offseason. Not always on Derek Carr. I just don't, I'm leaning towards going this route, either Will Anderson or Jalen Carter. That's just me. I don't think it's their biggest need is to go after quarterback, but I also understand the side of it. Well, we can get a lot cheaper at the quarterback position. And when you're picking at number two overall, you have to be looking and mindful of that and a guy like CJ Stroud, which the Carolina Panthers here go. But I have no problem with Will Anderson. Chris or Charles and Charles. Uh, Chandler Jones has not lived up to it, and I have not seen the play out of him consistently off the edge. You hope that he can get better down the line. I mean, he's still a good pass rusher and everything like that. I don't have a problem with them going Will Anderson. I might rather them going Jalen Carter, but I also understand the edge value and getting an edge player like Will Anderson is unbelievable. Stroud! To these Carolina Panthers, they need a quarterback. They're hoping and praying that they can get themselves somebody because they have a talented roster. They have a team that can compete. Because, I mean, you look at their young pieces. They've got a good young core. Their offensive line is looking good. They have DJ Moore. Hopefully, Terrace Marshall can be a good number two. And LaVisca Chenault's a good slot slash screen target that can take it to the house every time if nothing else put him as a running back and then defense you know you got brian burns you got Derek bar brown you got you got some guys jc horn who's been locked down this year so you have legit pieces and jeremy chin of course you name it so it's not like they need to rebuild if they get themselves a franchise quarterback they can compete especially in that division right away with tom brady might not be there next year they could be the top team in the division with cj stroud i hope they can get someone man Jalen Carter to the Eagles. I love it. I mean, you're just getting the best player available. Jalen Carter, if you get him next to his former teammate Jordan Davis coming back healthy, hopefully next season, we'll be rocking. And that Eagles, Howie Roseman defensive line. You know he loves those defensive linemen. The trenches, the alligators, the elephants. I was swimming with elephants today. On to number five, though. Olu Fashanu going to the Jaguars. Let me think about this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'd rather go Skaronsky because if if you're saying to yourself, we're taking Fashanu, what are you doing with Fashanu? Which I guess Jawan Taylor being a free agent, you could say, look, we're not going to re-sign you. Walker Little, we don't feel confident starting at right tackle. Olu, go ahead and be our savior over there at right tackle. Does make a lot of sense. We don't know if he can play right tackle. I think he does have the skill set. 
He's so talented, a 19-year-old player from Penn State. Continue to work on that footwork, but he's going to get there. That The natural strength in his frame is crazy. All the length, all the strength. Ola Vishanu easily could be taken over Peter Skaronsky, and it's something we will talk about more and more as we get in to the draft process in December, January, February, and so forth. This is going to be a highly debated topic between Skaronsky, who's more of a 32-inch, 32-and-a-half-inch arms. People are going to talk about him more as a guard, and Fashanu is more as this overall tackle prospect. He might go before Skaronsky, even though Skaronsky here going to the Bears is a more polished prospect, even though Fashanu's not that bad or nothing like that. I don't think he's like a crazy developmental project. Peter Skaronsky to the Bears. I do like this one a lot. Go get yourself some more offensive line help. You could put him at, I mean, I could put him at center if you really wanted to. You're not drafting at center at six overall. But let me think about this one too because, you know, Braxton Jones, he's not been bad. He's actually played good of late. And you do have to hope on that. But Larry Borm's been okay. I think Larry Borm's kind of a replacement level tackle. I'm not looking to replace him until like his contract. If you weren't wanting to pay him, then I would consider it. But Larry Borm's kind of that replacement level. He can come in there. He's a decent starter. I don't think he's like a top five, top 10 tackle or anything like that. Just doesn't really have the overall tools there. But nonetheless, he's still a really good player. And you want to keep him on that rookie contract. And finding maybe if you don't believe in Braxton Jones, then you could do Peters Kronsky and try him there. And if nothing else, you could put him over a right guard. And well, but I think you're good with Tevin Jenkins and Cody Whitehair. Even I, I don't know about Cody Whitehair's contract. I don't think you can get out of it this season, but next year I guess you could. But anyway, that's kind of my view on it. It, it, it seems a little interesting. Maybe I'd rather go as a true tackle because you're merely not putting him at guard. Miles Murphy at number seven to the Seattle Seahawks. Why not get more edge? I mean. That defense has been pretty good this season, but at the same time, always adding more talent to your defense will be um, by likely needed. And you got Boye Mafe, you got Achinna Wosu, who's played well this season, and Daryl Taylor. But adding another edge player who also has versatility play on the inside, I mean, I'm cool with that. I don't know if it's their biggest need. I do think interior is their biggest need on that defense or another corner even, adding more secondary. Well, actually, linebacker probably would be a bigger need at the moment, but maybe finding someone else there to be a combination of Trey Brown. If you're worried about the longevity with Trey Brown, then that could be in a conversation, especially with the corners being available and there's some good corners in this draft class. But Miles Murphy, just the best player available. Go ahead and improve that defensive line. I don't have a problem with that one at all. And then uh, number eight, Kelly Ringo to the Lions. Just, you know, who's your best corner on the board? Now you go ahead and improve the secondary some more. Just in general, the defense needing some improvement. And the quarterbacks, I just don't see anybody here at number eight overall, unless it's Anthony Richardson, which to me, I love Anthony Richardson. And if you're going to utilize him in the certain way of utilizing him as a runner slash option quarterback, like Justin Fields putting him in that scenario, don't let him throw the ball 35 plus times. That's not what you should be asking of Anthony Richardson. You need him to be running this specific offense and that's something I think we all need to kind of you know take a look at because look at the difference from Justin Fields towards the beginning of the year and towards the end of the year not they were asking him to Justin Fields to throw the ball they were being super conservative but they were now they're now using Justin Fields and his overall skill set and you're seeing what that does to your team now you need to stop people and get defense and that's kind of why I'd say I almost say go after Miles Murphy if you're the Chicago Bears and maybe go and address the offensive line some in free agency. Use some of that money there because it's easier to get offensive linemen who can come in and maybe start for you there and then find an edge rusher in Miles Murphy because you got to pay those guys 20 plus million dollars. Like if you want after my, uh, Marcus Davenport, that's a lot of money. Uh, with the Lions here, again, going back to them, Ringo, have no problem with that. I like Joy Porter. I like Ringo, Rodriguez, a lot of good corners in this draft class. And you just need to go ahead and improve that secondary some more. Let's go on to uh, number nine here, Brian Brazee. Brazee out of Clemson. I like Brazee a lot. And I just recently looked back on him, did a little scouting report. I was interested, man, because I know a lot of people, and even including myself, have watched the film on Brazee and have questioned his play a little bit. But at the end of the day, the dude is he's so rocked up, man. He doesn't look like a defensive tackle. He he cannot, he, he must have a six pack. The dude is shredded. I mean, probably didn't quite have a six pack, but he is shredded for 305 pounds. He looks like a freaking lumberjack or like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he is just these Arnold Schwarzenegger of the defensive tackles out there. He's so muscled up and he's athletic and explosive off the line. If he can continue to, if just the big question for Brazi is can he stay healthy? That's my biggest question with him. It's not the talent. It's there. Yes, you want to see more production from him, but it's more of the 
injuries that I'm worried about with Brazi is because he's had such a so much a big injury list that it's going to be something that teams are going to have to really vet when they get in. I'm not talking about veterinarian stuff, even though we are on Steve Irwin today, but that's my big thing with Brian Brazi is watching out for that, making sure that you keep, you have all the facts there and taking out, making sure you feel confident if you're going to take Brazi, especially in that top 10 with that injury list. But I love the I love this for the Houston Texans because they need defensive line help in, you know, shoring up that interior. They just get gashed over and over. You saw it again this week with Saquon Barkley, giving him to him 35 times up the middle. It's like, yo, that you gotta stop that nosebleed up the middle. On to the Paris Johnson Jr. pick out of Ohio State. Oh, the Ohio State University going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They need offensive linemen. Plug him into your left tackle position. Thumbs up, man. That's what you need to do. Either that or you go back into the corner position with some good corners. Don't have a problem either. Or Tyree Wilson to the Detroit Lions. Okay. Hey, I don't have a problem with this one either because if you're the Lions and if you say to yourself, hey, maybe we don't feel great about Levi Onzerike coming back from that spinal fusion injury, Tyree Wilson's a guy. Granted, maybe a little redundant with Josh Pascal. That's true. But he could also, I think he could stand up even more on the inside than Josh Pascal with those crazy, that crazy length and strength that he does have. I like him even as an edge player, but they could rotate those two and create some mismatches depending on how you're going up against your offensive linemen each week. Wilson, don't have a problem with that. Adding more edge talent and more defense in general is never a bad idea. And again, going back to that quarterback conversation, no problem with waiting or going into the second round at some point if you're Detroit you do want to get a quarterback but I'm leaning if you can't get Stroud if you can't get especially Bryce Young Bryce Young would be a a slam dunk pick for the Lions but if you can't get Bryce Young you can't get CJ Stroud then you're probably waiting until the second round because you've been you're like well Anthony Richardson I don't know do we feel confident in him starting even though I believe he can that's just my opinion on one person it seems like a lot of people don't feel that way and I'm probably wrong but hey that is what it is you know everybody's different out there I rock with it I'm cooling Tyree Wilson rolling it out there I'm cool getting more edge help Falcons, number 12 overall. What are the Dirty Birds doing? Hey, I think Gonzalez is a good player. That dude, man, he uh, is starting to flash some more ball skills. I was watching him too versus Washington today and watching that tape, see how he played. And he looked pretty good, let up a couple of passes, but one was not his fault. One was just a great catch by the receiver and another was just kind of off coverage and uh, the, you know kind of made a good play on it. But nonetheless, Gonzalez looks really, really good. And the Falcons get themselves AJ Terrell and Christian Gonzalez, two man coverage fiends. They can rock out with some good, uh, you know, potential passers. And that's what you need, man. If you look at the best teams in the league, when you get into the playoffs, you got to be able to play man-to-man coverage. If you have Gonzalez, you have Terrell, they could definitely do that. Uh, now let's go on to 13 down the list here. And it's Joey Porter Jr. to the Arizona Cardinals. And they need some more corner help, no doubt about it. So they go get themselves a young stud from Penn State. And this guy, you know, feel great about it. Obviously, the bud lines are there. And not to mention, checks off all the boxes. Good size, good speed, all of the necessary tools. Good in run support, good tackler as well. At least feisty tackler. Can miss some tackles here and there. But he's a good overall run defender. He's great in coverage. Getting the, you know, it's like... He's just great at the catch point, too, and that's something that translates to the next level. A little grabby, but still a great player. Arizona, they need some impact on that defense, and that secondary, for sure, is going to be wanting some help, whether it's edge position, defensive tackle, whether you're going to bring back Zach Allen, like just adding more help on that defense or on the trenches on the offensive side of the ball, on the offensive line. That's where they need to go. No running back, right? And look, I love B. John Robbins. I love the running backs. And I'm no, I'm no problem if you are Arizona or Atlanta and you scheme around that. But if you're Arizona, Kyler Murray, in this offense, you have enough firepower. You need the offensive line or you need to look at the defense. That is the big thing for them. On to the Packers. They go Quentin Johnson. We know this isn't happening, but... I actually like Jackson Smith and Jigba a lot for this team, but Quentin Johnson, I think he's a little overrated for me personally. I'm not there yet on Quentin Johnson. I just don't see the consistency at the catch point of a number one. Now, I understand he's really young and he's going to take some time and he's got the upside to be a a top-tier receiver in the NFL. You see that size, then you wouldn't think he could move that well at 6'4", 205 plus-ish pounds. But he just has some question marks in his overall route running prowess and with his contested catch with his overall hands consistency that I need to see before I can label him as a number one top 10 pick. Now he's number 14 overall and I feel better about that. I just like Jackson Smith and Jigba a little bit more as a day one impact for this Green Bay Packer team. 
or even even Michael Mayer would be a better impact, I think, day one. But Johnston, maybe even a little redundant with what you have in Christian Watson. Now, I'm not going to complain about receiver, though, to the Packers. I really shouldn't. On to Will Levis here to the Commanders. He's going to be the new commander taking over for Carson Wentz, even though Taylor Heineke, the Taylor Heineke magic, let's go. Oh, man, dude, he is just winning games. He's finding ways, and the defense stepped up, too, in a major way. You know, hey, it is what it is. That fumble at the end was huge. But uh, Washington winning some games here. Ron Rivera, I'm happy for him, man. So we'll see what happens if they can make this late uh, season push. Will Levis, a lot of, lot of questions to be answered. That decision making. I know people are going to say, oh, the tools, the tools. But at some point, man, you just can't keep throwing these passes into triple coverage. And we expect to forget about it. So we got to see some more consistent play before I can... I, you know, really mock him earlier. 15 is the earliest I would look to take him. I understand it. Hopefully Sam Al is someone in the wing you feel good about, and I'm leaning more towards that, that you kind of go with Sam Al, and especially if you don't feel like you can snag a quarterback that's going to be a great upgrade. I think Sam Al might be, you know, online with Will Levis. I really do at this point in terms of prospects. So I'm not really looking to make that pick. The more I think about it from yesterday in my own mock draft, so this is more of a critique on me not just Bengal, on me as well and what I was thinking. So uh, anyway, yeah, uh, I'd maybe even look at corner here and there's some good corners still on the board like Cam Smith or, uh, you know, Jalen Jones, pretty good. I think Jalen Jones, you know, in that, you know, 20 to 32 range later in the first round. Cam Smith in this range, 15 to 25 is really good. Uh, Broderick Jones here to the Indianapolis Colts. If you can't get a quarterback, I still love Anthony Richardson. I really do because I think Richardson's a guy that can come in here and run that quarterback power with Jonathan Taylor. And I talk about this building a scheme around him. They are the perfect team to build a scheme around a guy like Anthony Richardson. And they desperately need a quarterback. Maybe uh, Bengals not projecting Anthony Richardson in this mock draft. So I understand that. Uh, and getting offensive line, which has been a big problem for the Indianapolis Colts this year. It's like, dude, we invest so much money in it, but we cannot seem to get this offensive line fixed consistently. We have one year and then it's like, oh my gosh. Philip Rivers was able to survive, but now we're putting Matt Ryan under all this. And Broderick Jones would definitely be able to shore us up. And if nothing else, he could play a guard. Um, you know, Bernard Raymond, who I like a ton and I think could make a year two jump as he just kind of, you know, grows and builds more overall play strength. I just need to think he needs more core strength. I think he's going to be good, though. On to number 17 we go, and we are rolling right along halfway through this draft. Michael Mayer being the dangerous man with running around with a knife. No, not quite, but he will be for the Chargers. Get, see, they need another weapon, especially with the injuries that they have. Whether it's adding a Quentin Johnson or a Jordan Addison or a Jackson Smith and Jig, but I would love for them to add another piece into this offense, especially adding more firepower into this tough division. Defensively wise, yeah, they do need some linebacker. I could see Trenton Simpson really being someone they could target at pick 16 with him being available on the board. He'd add a fun element too to this team as a blitzer and as a coverage player for them, which is something they could use some more help on. Even Their corner's been playing better of late. You still have Derwin James, of course, in the back end and maybe even more interior defensive lineup, but no one I'd probably take at this point. So you could say right tackle. I don't know if I'm going to go offensive line again. I think you find someone maybe in the second or third round and then or even in free agency. So I love adding another playmaker into this offense, especially with some, you know, Keenan Allen getting a little bit older, getting more injury prone maybe at this point. That would be cool. So I'm, I'm okay with Michael Mayer in that tight end room, but not a problem with that. Another threat over the middle. Oh, Cyrus Torrance to the Bengals makes a ton of sense. If you do want to go in and add some more offensive line help for Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, he would definitely help in the run game for sure. Torrance, a guy who I like. I still think he's good. He's got some areas to improve upon. He needs, you know, he probably might go in this range because guards typically do go in this. The first guard, a lot of times, they still go top 15 or in the top 20. Osiris Torrance being probably the top guard in this class. I might differentiate on that. I don't know. We'll see. I'm still going through my prospect rankings on, you know, offensive linemen. I do think Torrance is good. I think he's more of an, a second rounder for me at the moment, even though he's got the tools. And again, he's probably, you know, this guard class, you say what it is. Uh, just needs to get a little bit better in terms of his leaning ability. Sometimes gets a little bit flat-footed forward on his feet and ends up leaning and getting a little bit forward on that. But nonetheless, so Torrance, super strength, and he at his size, he's got good speed, 340 pounds. B. John Robinson, two of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I See, after seeing Rashad White, man, who I like a lot, I do like Rashad White, I love the Sun Devil, man. I think he can really be someone for them long-term. 
At the same time, I do love Bijan Robinson. I'm not going to be complaining too much about this. I think you could look at the edge position, especially with Shaquille Barrett or Shaq Barrett, potentially not being ready for next season with that injury. It might take him a little bit more time. You may want to add some more edge talent because I think that's something that they could really look to address, adding more help on that defensive line or linebacker. And Actually, I'd probably say linebacker could be something they really look at because you do have to address Levante David potentially walking or even Devin White in free agency. That linebacker situation could look totally different. Dewan Jones to the Denver Broncos. You know, Bengal, I like this pick actually a lot. And Dewan Jones... I'm still not like maybe ready to put him in the first round yet, but he might be talked about come April or come even February and combine time, March. Like this guy might be in that first round conversation because at six foot eight, 340 plus pounds, and for his like he's got enough athleticism to be able to hang out there on the edge. Right tackle is something the Broncos need. He'd be a bulldozer out there on the right side for them, the opposite of Garrett Bowles. You have a crazy offensive line from top to bottom. And he's a guy that's going to be, you project along as a dude who, if he can continue to get better, honing in that balance, right? Things you have to work out when you're a big man, right? It's tough sometimes when you're that big is making sure you stay balanced, stay grounded. And it's something Evan Neal is continuing to work on throughout his young career. And I think Dewan can definitely work on that. We'll see if he can. I still have him as a, maybe an early second rounder. Because of that size and tools, I understand it's, you know, mid-second rounds where I feel better about Dewan Jones. But at number 20, I like the creativity for Bengal. I definitely got to give him a thumbs up on that one. Don't see it a ton. So on to these next rounds of picks. We're going with Jordan Addison to the Patriots. I would love this one. I just don't know if the Patriots are going to do it. You know what I'm saying? But I would love to add another fire, you know, another piece into this offense. But first and foremost, you got to fix the offensive coordinator position. You got to go ahead and say to yourself, hey, look, Matt, Patricia, Joe Judge, you know, maybe we can, you know, find some other jobs for you as a water boy. No, I'm joking. They're not that bad. But you need to get the offensive coordinator position down pat, whether it's, you know, finding someone like Steve, I don't know, know, obviously not Steve Sarkeesian, but someone in college that he's got relationships maybe with Alabama, and go to that well, or Bill O'Brien, you name it. Like they just need to find an OC that can be creative with this offense. It's clear that they're very, very redundant, very uh, kind of a, it's it just too easy. Some in a lot of these teams are being able to kind of figure out the Patriots that you go along throughout the game. So find some more a creative offensive minds in this offense could really help out Mac Jones. It's not all on Mac Jones. Yeah, he's taking a little bit more risk this year. That's okay. He's a young player. I don't think Mac Jones is all the problem. And even if you do believe that, then you got Bailey Zappi, who could be someone down the line. You need more playmakers in this offense. You need more creativity in this offense, whether it's right tackle, which is probably their biggest weakness on the offense, in my opinion. Isaiah Wynn has been benched multiple times this year. He's lit up a ton of sacks. It's been a revolving door there, right tackle. So finding a right tackle, either it's free agency and or the draft. And then also you could look in the defense side of the ball, adding some more playmakers in the back end. But specifically, I'd say even the pass rush, adding more help there. Uh, Trenton Simpson for the Seattle Seahawks. No problem with this one at all. Hey, you improved that defense a ton now with Trenton Simpson coming in there and Miles Murphy. Boy, you got some, you got some blitzers, man. You do. Like I said, Trent Simpson could come in next to uh, Jordan Brooks and be a great one-two punch. The athleticism and size-speed combination you could utilize these guys, that is wild. On to Jalen Duncan. Oh, okay, I got to stop here. Hold up. I'm not a big fan of this one personally as a Jets fan. Jalen Duncan, to me, is more of a day-two guy, like third-rounder. He's in that mold of a... Uh, what's his name out of Cincinnati who the bank or uh, Cleveland drafted a couple of years ago, like Hudson or... Crap, I'm not Hudson. I'm forgetting his name, but the dude out of Cincinnati, he's kind of in that mold for me. He's a developmental project with tools who could be an eventual starter out on a tackle position for you. I'm not drafting him in the first round. I'd rather say select Antoine Harrison here or um, trying to think who else is on the board, but someone like that, even Darnell Wright. I just, you know, not to mention, I go back to the Jets and say, Okay, who's playing tackle? And it's so early for me to kind of determine this because we need to see what Joe Douglas is going to do. Is it going to be Elijah Vera Tucker right tackle? And then Dwayne Brown left tackle, Mekhi Becton, what happens with him? Is he being traded? Is he going to be a guard? And then you have to figure out, okay, are we going to let go of Connor McGovern? Those are all questions you have to look at. I don't have a problem though with the Jets and the way their offense is run. Getting more offense line help, I'm never going to complain about this, especially Joe Douglas. Valuing those trenches is so important. Jameer Gibbs, 
to the Buffalo Bills and they get themselves another playmaker. Hey, I'm not ready to give up on James Cook just yet. Hey, in year number two, he can get better as a pass catcher for this team. And that's the only reason why you spend a second round pick on it. If you didn't draft James Cook last year, then I'd be like, yo, let's go, Jameer Gibbs. That'd be crazy, man. Help another, add another weapon in for Josh Allen. They need offensive line, though. And that's where I would be leaning, whether it's an Antoine Harrison, you put him at right tackle and maybe you move Spencer Brown into right guard. That could be an option. Or left guard, you know, and, and then, you know, you roll out that your best offensive lineman, however you feel you can do that um, to end up replacing um, Roger Schaffold. You could have Bates at right guard. You can figure something out. You know what I'm saying? Even if you want to put Harrison at left guard maybe for a season. But that's kind of my philosophy for the Buffalo Bills. It's either offensive line or you go after maybe, you know, I mean, it depends on Tremaine Edmonds, but you could always add more secondary. I think they'll be okay. when Once you get Tredavious back, Kyrie Elam in year number two and going forward there, safety. Uh, safety, yeah, I'd look at safety as well, especially with Brian Branch being available. On to number 25 we go. And it's going to be Jackson Smith and Jigba, Ohio State University. And I think Jackson Smith and Jigba would be a nice addition to this offense. Adding some more playmakers in for Lamar Jackson, whether you just want to get more tight ends. I don't know, Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews and just get a third tight end. But uh, Darnell right? speaking of tight end, oh, we'll talk about that in a second. Jackson Smith and Jigba, I think is the best receiver still in this class. For me personally, he's got the highest floor. Him and Jordan Addison to me are one, two. And, and I still feel really, really good about those guys. And you put Jackson Smith and Jigba into the slot. He, he wins in the most important ways. Even if you're getting Keenan Allen for the next 10 years, I'm going to be really, really happy about that because that who's who he's got very similarity in terms of style to his game and what he can be at the next level is like a Keenan Allen. And I'm again, I'm taking that at 25 overall all day if I can get Keenan Allen. Oh, yeah. On to number 26 overall, Darnell Washington. I get it. Washington has like crazy measurables. This is like six foot seven. He's 265, 70 pounds. He's basically an offensive lineman playing tight end. He's got good athletic ability in terms of like straight line speed and being able to create mismatches matches on the outside, you know, over the middle of the field and even on the outside if he wanted to as a go up and get it tight end receiving threat and especially in the red zone for Tennessee, which they do need some more help. But I'm like in Chigaconquo, man. I don't know if this is their biggest need. I'd say offensive line or a receiver in general, helping that out. Maybe a Kayshawn Boutte, depends if you project him out or, or whatnot. Or like I said, offensive line, receiver, or even adding more edge talent, replacing Bud Dupree could be something you look at as well. Those are kind of my big three needs for the Tennessee Titans. Darnell Washington, more of a day two guy, round two dude. I think, you know, again, I understand it though for the Tennessee Titans, a team that loves their blockers and basically he could work in as a help chip man, offensive lineman for the Tennessee Titans and he would open up a lot of lanes. But Derrick Henry, Brian Branch out of Alabama coming over to the Dallas Cowboys. He'd basically be a Jordan Lewis replacement, maybe a long-term help for them at safety as well. If you don't bring back Jaron Curse, he could come in and slide into that and be a multiple. Like he, he just brings a lot to your versatility into your defense. Jordan Lewis being a free agent, I definitely could see that being something that they could really go after in Brian Branch, whether it's an outside corner itself, which, you know, Cam Smith, who comes off the board next to the Giants, I could see them going after him. I don't have a problem with this one. Brian Branch is a really, really good player and he could come in, like I said, help them day number one. Ken Smith to the Giants. Hey, man, you need another corner. Don't have a problem with this one, especially in weak Martindale system. He can play press. He can play man. He can play zone. It doesn't really matter whether it's press or off coverage. He's really good in all rounds and maybe doesn't have crazy athletic ability, but he's, he's got decent speed, good ball skills too, which is going to be nice for Wink Martindale. He can be the Marcus Peters of this defense with Adore Jackson and um, what's his name? Aaron Robinson, maybe put him in the slot, move him back over into the slot. So yeah, I like that pick. If you can't get a receiver, maybe you take a Sean Cash on Boutte here or find yourself somebody, man, because they need more playmakers. It's not all on Daniel Jones. They could look at quarterback Anthony Richardson. If he were to fall here, if, if he were mocking him, I would definitely take him at this point for the Giants too. Let's go on to these final picks, and it's Clark Phillips. Oh, let's go, Lucas Van Nesh. Let's go. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk about Lucas Van Nesh here in a second, but Clark Phillips, I do like Clark Phillips a lot. I think I mocked this one yesterday, didn't I? I think I did to the Minnesota Vikings. I think this would be a great fit for them, a team that plays a lot of zone coverage. He could come into the slot where you might want to say that might be his position of choice at the next level, being that he's a smaller corner, 5'8", 5'9", or, you know, like 5'9 and a half. I don't know what exactly he is. He might be just under 5'10". Definitely towards that range. 
He's great, though, in terms of his ball skills. Perfect for this zone coverage heavy team. And then we put in to Lucas Van Nesh. I have been seeing more and more. I didn't think he was going to come out, man. He's only like a redshirt sophomore. I thought he'd maybe come back another year. But with all the hype that he's getting from Dane Brugler, now Bangle, he he's probably coming out. He Let's just put it this way. The dude is a wrecking machine at Iowa. He destroyed Wisconsin's offensive line this week. In, you know, yeah, they were getting pressure in general, but he was a man out there destroying Wisconsin offense alignment, which is not easy to do because offense, hey, look, not everyone there at Wisconsin's first rounders or nothing like that, but he was playing all over the field. He was a brute everywhere where that right tackle could not block him at all. He was lined up as like a five tech four I for them at times in the game as a defensive tackle, and he was on the outside winning versus the left tackle versus the right tackle. It didn't matter. He just completely stonewalled and pummeled the guy, sent him to the ground, sent the left tackle to the ground. He is really, really good. He has got crazy good strength, good athleticism off the edge. He rushes like a grizzly bear, as Dane Brugler was saying. Really fun prospect. If he keeps getting this hype, he's definitely coming out. He's a first-round player. I think so. He's got the first-round tools. And to the Kansas City Chiefs, he's a perfect fit, too, for what they like off the edge. Him and George Karloff, this would be fun. I love that pick. This might be my favorite pick of the draft. So I might start projecting him in my own mock drafts here soon. BJ Ojolari from LSU. The Tiger. Man, obviously, they've got a stud. They've got some stud pass rushers over there at LSU. BJ is definitely one of those guys who could come in here into Philly be another edge rusher, which you know how he rose, man. They love those guys. You get Now you get two guys on your defensive line, and this would just be scary. I'm just saying it would be really, 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 really scary for opposing teams to now have B.J. Ojolari, I mean, the, Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat, Jordan Davis, and Jalen Carter on that defensive line. No more talk about it. You just have too much pass. So look at Bengal. He's smiling right now. You can't quite see it, but he is crazy. He's just laughing because he knows how bad that would be for opposing teams. Even though I think maybe you'd be better off with other positions, maybe even adding someone. Uh, you know, I, I, well, running backs are off the board at this point. Other areas you could look at adding. Hmm, I'm trying to think. Like I said, I would love Jameer Gibbs as another secondary weapon. If for, you know AJ Brown has a bad game like he did last night and you can't quite get any weapons going, then maybe you could get someone else like Jameer Gibbs into that offense who could be a fourth, fifth player. Then only. I've got tons of playmakers. Uh, but yeah, I, I still like the pick, man. It's still a good pick. I can't nitpick on that. You could look at corner safety. Safety probably being the biggest need of the bunch. Antonio Johnson out of a &M, Texas A&M, should I say, coming over to the Houston Texans, and they get some more defensive help here. And uh, they get Bryce Young with their number one overall pick. And wait... Oh, okay, that's right. Okay, I'm like, wait a minute. Do they trade back up into the first round? This is just an extra park because I'm so used to pay 32 picks, obviously. But this is round number two that he threw in there. Johnson would be an animal coming in here with Tyree Wilson. You're really revamping your defense. Johnson would probably be playing as a safety. How would you do that? So would P. Trey be playing more as a free safety? Johnston. So Johnston in the slot because you still have Desmond, um, Desmond King. So maybe a little bit redundant with what you have in Jalen Petrie and then also Desmond King. I don't know. Maybe play him as a linebacker even, I guess. I, I don't know. That's the only thing I'll say is like a third DB on that. I would say they do play with three DBs in Houston secondary, but that's the only thing I would say on that. Even though he's a really good player, maybe just say BPA. Anyway, that's going to be it here for Bengals' new mock draft. Let me know what you think. My favorite pick was the Luke Lucas Van Nash pick out of Iowa. That dude, I'm telling you, go take a look at this, man. He is a force and a wrecker. Hope everyone has a good day. My name is G Sling. I'm doing my thing. Go wrestle with an alligator, toss a whale, a handcuff, lightning, throw thunder, jet. I'll talk to you later.